Good, good morning. So good glad morning. to see all of you today, and especially those of you who are um, worshiping from home or out on your porch or uh, in the kitchen with a cup of coffee, wherever you may be. We're so glad to have you here and excited to, to greet you um, in the name of Christ on this day. As we begin today, there are some announcements that I want to um, make. Uh, first of all, this week we have added to our online repertoire a Facebook, no, I'm sorry, not Facebook Live, we already had that, but a YouTube channel. And you can find that at YouTube under asburyumc.lr, no dot, asburyumc.lr. And if you'll go there and, um, and uh, become a subscriber, then you'll be able to access um, both worship services, some Bible studies that uh, Brother Nick has led, um, and uh, other things that are upcoming. So we hope you'll go to YouTube, Asbury UMC Little Rock, become a subscriber, and um, you'll have all kinds of great things happening there. The other thing that we want to make an announcement about is we are planning a virtual Palm Sunday Parade. And so this week, what we would like for you and your families to do is take a shot of yourselves outside um, in active, doing something active, something fun, um, and send it in to Brother Nick. And we'll be able to put music to that next Sunday and have a parade uh, virtually. So you send that to Nick at Asbury dash lr.org so nick at asbury dash lr.org send a picture to brother nick we want um we would appreciate those by thursday so that we can get that ready by sunday and um, that's how we'll open up worship next week so um those are our main announcements right now um and we're glad to Glad to make those. If any of you have anything else we need to know about, please let us know and we'll get that um, announced by the end of our service today. So as we gather, um, uh, would you join me in a word of prayer? Loving God, today we give you thanks for the gift of the light of the sun after a long, dark night. It seems, O oh God, that we are living in the face of darkness and shadow at this time in our lives. We pray for all of those who are ill right now, um, sick with coronavirus, but other things as well, struggling to get treatment. Um, we pray for our healthcare workers on the front lines who are exhausted at sometimes overwhelmed and are so aware of not only the illnesses of those who are sick, but also the struggles of those who love them and want to care for them. So I pray also this day for all of those who have relatives in hospital or at home sick or in nursing homes or care facilities where they cannot visit uh, but can only love from afar. We thank you for ways that we can reach out to each other through telephone and text and FaceTime and, and Zoom and all the ways that um, we have to use technology. And yet we're aware of those who don't have technology or who don't know how to use it and uh, feel so isolated during this time. Today, oh God, we thank you for uh, our governor who has declared this day a day of prayer in Arkansas. And we join him and other brothers and sisters throughout our state, praying in the strong name of Jesus Christ against this virus. Praying, oh God, that it will end soon. 
and that we will be emerging from our houses like so many of us desire to emerge into fellowship again, into contact again, into life, um, which will not be the same, but perhaps will be better because we've had this time where we've reconnected and found one another and found the things that matter the most to us. God, as we worship today, we do so in a spirit of truth and hope, giving you praise and thanksgiving for yet another new member to the Asbury family, Riley Reese Ford. We pray for her and for her parents, Clayton and Haley, and for her grandparents and all those who love her, though they have not yet met her. Lord, keep her safe, heal her, send her home, and we look forward to laying eyes on her as well. And finally, O oh God, we pray that through the power and the mystery of your Holy Spirit, that you will make the waves and the connection of this time and space as strong as they might be if we were in our sanctuary or in our Wilson Activity Center this morning, greeting one another, smiling at each other, giving hugs and high fives and, and, and offering to each other the hospitality that comes only through grace. May your grace and your love abound as we hear your word proclaimed in song and in sermon. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to worship. May it be a pleasing offering to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now we have the opportunity to hear some music this morning from um, Caleb and his friends. So listen to this. Good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm Caleb. These are my friends. Uh, <laughs> we have Nick Bradley McNerlin, and we have Maddie home from um, the University of Arkansas. As all classes have gone online and the world keeps going crazy, but the silver lining is that she's here with us and she brings so much to, to worship. Uh, we're excited to have her here. Um, I don't talk to Dee Dee uh, or Nick about what I'm going to say before this stuff. Maybe I should, maybe I don't know even, but I do want to just um, say that our prayers are also with those in Jonesboro who uh, were affected by the tornado um, yesterday. Um, you know, timing is never good, um, but sometimes it can be bad. So. Um, all of our thoughts are, are with them. Um, welcome to another week of uh, electronic worship. And it's sometimes hard to find a silver lining in this time um, with pay cuts and layoffs and sickness um, and, and extreme weather. Um, I was driving in today and I just forgot to be thankful that I, I woke up with a shelter over my head and I had food to eat. Um, and, and just try to be thankful for those things um, during this time. Um, and the church is not about being here, but about being together. It's not about what you're wearing. Maddie asked me what she should wear today. I said, dress up a little bit, and she chose a white T-shirt. But, um, <laughs> you know, whether you're in your pajamas or you're ready for the day, it's just about this connection and this time of worship together. And so as we sing this first one, just called Great Are You, Lord, um, just try to minimize the distractions around you and maybe close your eyes and sing if you know it um, and just use this time to really worship the one true God with us. You give light, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lives. So we pour out our praise with 
pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only you give life you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken and great are you lord it's your breath in our lives so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise with your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise with your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Pour out our praise to you this morning, God. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord, oh, all the earth. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Proclaim this. Good morning to everybody. I'm going to turn this lamp off. That's okay. The peace of Christ is with all of you this morning. It is a blessing to be with you. Uh, it is a blessing to be in worship with you and to see everybody in the best way that we can right now. Um, our message this morning comes from John's Gospel, and it is chapter 5, verses 1 through 17. Uh, please take a moment and grab your Bible or open up your Bible app. Uh, and then we will join in the Word of God together. Now hear this, the Word of God. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man who was there, who had been ill for one man who one man was there, 
who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, The man who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared in the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Therefore the Jews started persecuting Jesus, because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My Father is still working, and I also am working. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Not one of us, not me, not you, not Dee Dee, perhaps not even the Apostle John, knows why Jesus chose this man out of the many to heal on that day. There were hundreds gathered at this pool, at this portico, all seeking the same thing, to be healed, whether it was a physical ailment or some type of malady uh, that had inflicted them. They were at this pool because there was a belief at the time that when the waters stirred, if you were the first person into the water, that you would be magically healed. The, Greek had, the Greeks had a word for this place, and it was called an Aslepion. And that's named after the Greek god Aslepius, who's the god of healing. And they believed that when the water was stirred, that was Aslepius stirring the water to bring healing powers. It's often believed that it was hot springs that fed these pools that caused the stirring, something we're very familiar with mm-hmm. here in Arkansas. So we don't know why. Jesus chose this man on this day. But here's what we do know about this man. He had been there for a very long time. He had been afflicted with his condition, his inability to walk for 38 years. It says so right there in the word. And he was unable to put himself in the water. So that means day after day, year after year, as he laid there, he watched other people go into the water to get what he felt was truly his, or at least what he deserved. And so Jesus approaches him with a very simple question. Do you want to be made well? Here's what's interesting about our friend. The way he answers does not directly answer the question that Jesus asked him. Because there's a disconnect for him. There's a disconnect between the healing he wanted and the healing that Jesus knew he needed. So his excuse was that I can't get into the water. He was looking past Jesus to the water, the only place that he knew to find hope. What Jesus was offering him was spiritual restoration, the opportunity to be made whole in his heart. But he couldn't see past the afflictions he was facing on earth to see the spiritual change that he needed. When Jesus made him whole, he was able to get up and walk, but he was able to do so much more. And this is only possible because of the grace that Jesus affords by moving first. As, as Wesleyans, we have a, 
a concept for that. We call it prevenient grace. It's this belief that all things that we have are possible because God moves first. He creates an avenue for us to come to him as his children and to grow in love and in faith. I've had the blessed opportunity of being with our students three times a week on Zoom. And while it's not nearly as much fun as playing in the warehouse, we are finding ways to connect. And one of the things that we do is we share a scripture that is meaningful for us in our lives right now. One of our students shared a, a beautiful scripture from Genesis and then asked a very difficult question. Since God is able, why doesn't he just take this virus away? It made us all think for a second. If God can, why doesn't he? But I think to ask that question is to miss what God is calling us to. And that is calling us to him for a life of eternal love and glory. Sometimes like the man laying by the pool, we can only see the water right in front of us, and it causes us to miss the beauty of Jesus standing there, asking us if we want to be made well. Jesus comes around later, and this man doesn't know who he was, and he says to him, you have been cured, sin no more. What Jesus is saying is that I have restored you spiritually. I have made you right with the Father. You have been cured and you are now a child of God. Though you can walk, let the Holy Spirit in to do a mighty change in you so that your remaining days on earth can be used to glorify God. That's the road to sanctification. It's this belief that through Christ, no matter what is going on in the world around us, the best is still yet to come because we are an eternal people. And so, though at times we deal with the challenges of the temporary, we are moving towards an eternal glory. And we see that if we pay attention. We continue to see that even though we are dealing with challenges, we see the beautiful acts of the church, these means of grace that God will use to bring people comfort and peace and love being done by so many in our community today. The medical workers and the churches and, and the, the people that provide support, people that are, that are changing their entire clothing industry to make medical masks. These are all means of grace that God will use to heal others. There's a line in, in this scripture that I read today that is one of the most misunderstood lines in all of the Bible. It is verse 15. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. If you read it on its surface, it looks very much like this man was telling on Jesus just to save his own backside. You can't blame him. There's many among us who would probably do the same. But a closer examination will show you that John uses the Greek word anangelos in the, when he says the word told. What anangelos means in Greek is to announce and to proclaim. He only uses that word three other times in his entire gospel. And they're all found in chapter 16, verses 13 to 15. I want to read these to you now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. 
There is no virus, no quarantine, no tornado, no law, no social norm that will keep us from what we are called to do. And that is to declare the glorious name of Jesus Christ to all who need to hear it, to all who are laying by the waters waiting for healing. God through us will use us as a vehicle to bring others to the salvation that they so desperately need. As Jesus said, as God works, so do I. So I say to all of you this morning, as God continues to always work, so do we. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, what a glorious morning to be together. Amidst everything that is going on around us, amidst viruses and natural disasters and fear and concern and, and cabin fever even, we see in you the glory that you lay on us through your son, Jesus Christ. We ask this morning that you continue to work in us in a mighty way, God, that through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, you lead us to be your disciples, to help people to see that there is something greater and beautiful in this life and in the life we are headed towards. God, it is so easy for us to get down, to feel defeated. These are very, very normal emotions, but we know that through you, we are strengthened. We are strengthened in love. We are strengthened in mercy. And let that be a calming peace that washes over us this day and every day going forward. Now we ask that you are with those this morning who were impacted by the tornado in the Jonesboro area. That you provide the steady hand of protection that they need to pick up the pieces and move forward and to do so united and stronger than before. God, we ask you are with all of those who are, who are fighting this virus. With new information every day, we find out that we have more information yet unanswered. But we put our faith and trust in you completely that your will continues to be done through all of this. Uh, we are thankful for churches around the country and around the world who continue to seek new ways to glorify you, to bring your word. May you continue to be with them, continue to protect them and strengthen them. Because your message is a mighty message. It is not a message of fear. It is a message of hope. It is a message of glory. It is a message of love. We must continue to preach that. We must continue to keep that at the center of our lives and be your vehicles for grace. So God, guide us this week to fulfill the great commission that you called us to fulfill and preach the glorious name of your beautiful son. It's in his name the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Amen. It's been a blessing to be with all of you today. Um, Caleb and friends, Bradley and Maddie, um, are going to close us with one last song. Uh, but before I turn the computer towards them, um, I want to remind you now during this last song that this is a great time to give. And we have three ways to do so. Um, you can go online uh, to asburylittlerock.org uh, through our website. Uh, you can text asburyumc to 73256, or you can mail a check to the office. Uh, one more reminder as well, after the song ends, uh, we will prepare for our 
Sunday school, virtual Sunday school, uh, which will happen at 11 o'clock after we all refill our coffees and get something to eat. So we look forward to seeing you then. The grace of God be with you. A little bit more, a little bit more. There. <laughs> um, I am not a pastor. I'm not Pastor DD. I'm not Brother Nick. But I know God is good all the time. I know that. And um, I chose to sing this song. Um, because of that, I want to read you the verse and a line from the chorus. Uh, the second verse says, In every season, your purpose is unchanging. In every moment, you're working for my good. Jesus, the rock that never fails, your kingdom will not be shaken. Your kingdom will not be shaken. The second stanza of the chorus says, In the storm, your peace and your love won't let me go. You have spoken, and I know that it is so. Um, so sing, sing this with us at home as we continue to worship. There is a promise that points beyond my failure. There is a still voice to silence all my fear. Even the worst of my mistakes are miracles in the making. Miracles in the making By your stripes I am healed With one touch I am made whole You have spoken And I know that it is so In the storm you are peace and your love won't let me go. You have spoken and I know that it is so. In every season your purpose is unchanging. In every moment, you're working for my good. Jesus, the rock that never fails, your kingdom will not be shaken. Your kingdom will not be shaken. By your stripes I am healed, with one touch I am made whole. You have spoken, and I know that it is In the storm you are peace, and your love won't let me go. Have spoken, and I know that it is your word is settled in heaven, it will be done. Father, let it be done. Yours is the kingdom forever, your will be done. Let it
and in the storm you are pleased and your love won't let me go you have spoken and i know that it is so lord you have spoken and i know that it is Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here with, with us this morning virtually. Um, the experts say you need to keep your routine as close uh, to the same as possible. And we will be here. We are consistent. We will always give you a place, whether it's Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, whatever. We'll give you a space to come worship and to hurt and to heal and to praise. Um, we'll be here. So let us know what we can do for you during this time. And any resources that you may be fortunate enough to have, um, give to others. Pass the grace of God along this week, and we will see you for uh, Sunday school, um, and we'll see you around. Let us know what you need. Thanks so much. Have a good week. Mm -hmm.